Now, with his band The Shadows, he spent more weeks at number one than anyone else apart from Elvis and the Beatles. And with a career spanning well over 50 years, Hank Marvin is credited with inspiring some of the world's best guitarists. In a minute, we'll talk to Hank about his career and the release of his 15th solo album. But first, let's take a look through the archives. Four young men who have been hitting the hit parade where it really counts. They've been on our program once before. It's great to welcome back the Shadows. is with me now mercifully without that shirt. Hey, yes, <laughs> my voice blows. Hi again, there you yeah, Good to see you, Hank. Now, your 15th solo album, let's talk a little bit about that first. I mean, what, why? What, what, what drives you to keep going and keep playing and making music? Look, I, I enjoy playing the guitar, I enjoy making music. It's always a challenge when you have to do something new. Uh, in this case, it's an album which is uh, an interpretation, instrumental interpretation of 14 songs, 13 of which are famous tunes. And because I like to approach it a little differently from the original, obviously still keeping the essence of the tune, but you can do a different arrangement, a different approach. And that takes thought, time, and it, it is a challenge. And that's, that's great. At my age, you need challenges to keep your brain active. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of, I mean, in terms of jazz, people uh, obviously uh, pursue an instrumental path. In terms of pop music, you did. And then the Beatles and more uh, vocal groups really uh, kicked off. So That's right. does playing the way you play and taking away the voice, say, you know, from Police or the Eagles, right. does that work in the 21st century? It appears to. Yeah, it appears to. Uh, it's interesting you mention that because 1965, the Shads had a, a big vocal hit, a song called Don't Make My Baby Blue. And it, it, it was in the top 10 at the time. And George Harrison, um, who? George Harrison. <laughs> We used to bump into each other a lot at Abbey Road because we both recorded there. And he said, oh, I love the new record. He said, can I give you a tip or a bit of advice? I said, sure. He said, stop recording instrumentals, more vocals. Mm -hmm. We did not listen to him. But as it's turned out, it's gone pretty well. <laughs> it's gone all right. It's gone all right. Let's have a, hear a clip from uh, the latest album. Will you play with your son, I think? Let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, playing with, well, playing the violin there, obviously, but <laughs> how, how is it playing with and recording with your own family? Is that, is that, is that good? Is it bad? How yes, it because you don't have to pay them. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it is fun because uh, I, I started to teach Ben the guitar when he was uh, about uh, 13 years old. And then he stopped doing it for a while, then started again. And now he's a Bachelor of Music in Contemporary Guitar. He was in my band for about 12 years, and we have recorded together on several albums. And uh, it was great. I hadn't worked with him on an album for oh, maybe maybe uh, 10 years. So it was good, in fact, to be able to get back together again. Because obviously he's younger, as you probably noticed. <laughs> his his um, 
influences are different, so we're pooling our ideas together, coming from different directions, and it usually comes out pretty well. I, I said earlier, as a sort of trail for, for this interview, that you, you've influenced some of the great guitarists, and you've also influenced quite a lot of us rotten guitarists. I mean, the fact that people wanted to play like you and just couldn't do it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, do you, are, you, are you very proud of the fact that lots and lots of people actually took up the guitar and at least tried to play music yes. because of you? It's very flattering, but you know one of the nice things is with, as you say, guys maybe who are, who are either amateurs or semi-pros, but they still enjoy playing. That's the great thing. I often meet people who, you know, they're, they're, they're in their fifties or sixties, they're accountants or bricklayers. Say, hey, hey, you started me playing guitar, and I still play with a few mates on a Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, and we love it. And I think that's wonderful. They've got a hobby, a musical hobby they love. And then, of course, the ones you, you mentioned who are professionals, who've subsequently developed their own style, and now they're famous in their own right. And that's all, also a pleasure to think they've had some, I've had some kind of input in getting them off on the road. I think they've got uh, a few stills of, of you with Cliff Richard in the uh, early days of the shadows. I don't know, I can't remember, but um, no, there, <laughs> but I mean, what, what, what was it that, that you think broke through then? What was it that you did that made the band so famous? I think there were probably several things. One was, I mean, obviously in the first place, Cliff um, <clears throat> had a, a great hit record with Move It, first real British rock and roll record. That was a big hit for him. He subsequently followed that up with other rock and roll records. And then, of course, the biggest in a while was Living Doll, Living Doll, which became a monster hit. Um, the, the kids loved him. Mums and dads started to love him and us after Living Doll because, hey, he can sing, they can play. We were slowly developing a sound as a group, which the public liked. And I think they liked our personalities. I think in the, the original Shadows, the, the four guys, Bruce, Jet, Tony and myself, were all different but seemed to have an appeal with audiences. The audiences really seemed to like us and they loved the sound we were producing. And the biggest thing, of course, was the fact that we were privileged to have some great tunes to record, like Apache, Wonderful Land, Foot Tapper, which we wrote, so it wasn't that wonderful, but... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too bad, didn't do it too badly. And just just a, a final thought about music now. I mean, is the, is the era of the guitar band kind of dead? Uh, it's, it's certainly for younger people if you listen to the if you listen to the radio i don't know i don't know because since there's some of the biggest bands in the world still are guitar based bands look I, I think when the synthesizers came on the scene everyone said oh guitars are finished biggest bands in the world stones obviously uh, bruce springsteen mm. uh, eagles the, the still police, touring. eagles you can go on and on and on however i think there's a place in music in popular music indeed for guitar and electronic instruments. They all have a part to play in this. Hank, thanks very much for It's my us. pleasure. And Hank's new album is called Hank, and it's out on Monday.